and welcome to the April edition of 71 Magazine. I'm your host, John Bryanton, and we'd like to give special thanks to OMU for underwriting this segment today. You know, with all the pollen that's in the air and all the rain that we've experienced lately, you can definitely tell that spring is alive and well in Owensboro. Mm -hmm. uh, as we're preparing to move into summer, though, we're going to be using a lot more water, whether it's to water our lawns or, or fill our pools or even water our plants. So joining me in the studio today is Sonia Dixon, who's a communication mm -hmm. and public relations manager with OMU, and she's going to give us uh, some tips on water usage this year. So, Sonia, welcome to the show. Well, happy spring, happy I know, summer. I know, gosh. So. And I'm glad, is, hopefully this rain will slow down a little bit little mm -hmm. bit. Here's my fear though. It's going to suddenly turn 90 degrees and then we're going to be in the heat of summer. So exactly, if exactly. we can enjoy some spring, let's do it right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Before we mm -hmm. get into the water uses chip, let's begin with talking and let our viewers know where does OMU get their water? Because I think a lot of people, believe it or not, are under the impression we get it out of the Ohio River. You know, we have an underground aquifer in this area um, and many, many over a hundred years ago, as a wow. matter of fact, a hundred and 20 years ago yes. almost, um, they had the foresight to dig in and uh, put wells in and were able to take from this aquifer. And what's wonderful about that is it's not surface water, so it's mm -hmm. not exposed to as many um, contaminants and those types of things that can come in from the surface. And there are some natural layers of clay and other, other sediments and those types of things that protect mm -hmm. it. Um, so it's taken from there, obviously still treated, even though we, we've got a great source and goes through our process. But you know, that means that we have an ample supply mm -hmm. and that we have a safe supply. And so we're very, very fortunate in this area. Well, let me ask you mm -hmm. a question, sort of off script here, but I mean, is is the way we get our water, is that common throughout the United States or uncommon? It's uncommon. Okay. Uh, most most organizations that get water, most companies, it's usually from surface water. Okay. And there's there's a whole different treatment process in that, as right. you can imagine. Yeah. Um, because, you know, for instance, the Ohio River is used for transportation. Right. You know, those sorts of things. So there are a lot of things that, that it come in contact with that, and certainly they're able to, to deliver still very safe water, but they have to go through a much more extensive treatment process than, than we do here. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. speaking about treatment, tell our viewers about mm -hmm. the testing process of water. You know, it amazes me, and I meant to calculate this, and I didn't, the number of tests that we do, and they're validated by the State Depart the state Division of Water. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's continual, and it's not just, you know, we don't just test at the wells, we don't just test um, as the water's coming out of the plant, mm -hmm. we, we test throughout our entire system. So um, what, what that says to me is that I feel so much more comfortable knowing that, you know, we're not just testing once a year or once a month, that we're continually testing the water, making sure that everything's in balance and making sure that we're delivering good, safe water. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, OMU provides an annual qual water quality report we do. each year. We do. And I think 2018 is out. Mm -hmm. And where can mm -hmm. they get that information? It is available on our website at omu.org. Mm -hmm. You can easily find it. It's under water quality reports. If you don't want to go there or you feel like you would like to have a copy of that, certainly if you could call us at 270-926-3200. 200, you can get a copy of that. And what's great about that is it does have a lot of reporting of, in, of all of our findings for the year, a summary mm -hmm. of that. But it also gives you some really great information about your source water, how it's treated, all of those sorts of things, and some phone numbers to call if you have some additional questions. Okay, because I know mm -hmm. the last time that I looked at one of those water quality reports, mm -hmm. You know, it was like a scud missile going over my head. I, I didn't, I guess I didn't understand it. <laughs> mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if I need to, there is a number there where I can get some clarification. Yeah, certainly, certainly that same number that we mentioned, the 926-3200. Okay. Call and, you know, our water quality group can talk to you. But what's great is that, you know, if you read that narrative in there, there's some just really good information about mm -hmm. things that you may not have known about um, the water in your community. And, and, you know, that applies throughout. I don't, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that OMU provides water also to the water districts that serve the entire county. Um, so our entire community is, is using this, this great wonder, uh, underground aquifer that we have mm -hmm. and their water's going through our treatment process. It, it is amazing mm -hmm. because see, I live out in the county. So I get my mm -hmm. water from Southeast Davis County mm -hmm. Water. Mm -hmm. And I had one of my neighbors, you know, when I mentioned something about OMU water, there was something mm -hmm. in the newspaper, they said, oh, well, I'm glad we don't, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, yes, you get mm -hmm. your water from OMU yeah. because they and, supply all those areas. And we're so glad to do that. You know, um, what, What's wonderful about that is that we know, we know that we're able to provide safe water to our entire county. Mm -hmm. um, we know that we're also, we have an ample supply to do that. And because we are working with the, with the districts, we're all able to keep our costs lower. Mm -hmm. So you're getting affordable water delivered to your right. home. I don't think people mm -hmm. really realize it, but the next time that you're out, in another state mm -hmm, or whatever, mm -hmm. go ahead and taste the water because I, listen, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say there's anything wrong with the water where I was born and raised at. Oh, no. Okay, but I can tell a mm -hmm. huge difference. My father, when mm -hmm. he comes to, to visit me, 
always talks about how good Owensboro water is. That's so great to hear. And that's because, you know, we, we don't have to go through quite as much treatment. Right. Um, the fact that we have um, a wonderful, um, the, the, the aquifer right. is there, that it is um, able to filter out a lot of things that, um, you know, we j we're just very fortunate. And, you know, the fact that we are expanding our cabin plant, which mm -hmm. is a state-of-the-art treatment facility to even, you know, treat more, you know, it's just, um, it's it's kind of the best of all worlds coming together. And you hear that a lot. And, right. and we have all Always, you know, you hear people. We're proud of that. Absolutely. You hear a lot of people go, oh, "We've got great water. Absolutely. We've got great water." We and, and some people that do are aware of where it comes from. Really like mm -hmm. to brag about that, mm -hmm. and I think it is something to brag yeah. about. Speaking about the Calvin plant, how mm -hmm. is that coming? It's right on schedule. Yeah. Um, a lot of people may not realize this, but um, the, that plant was built to be expanded. Um, as you may know, we have Plant A, and that's mm -hmm. the name of the plant. Everybody always wants to know. Right. You know, we have the Calvin plant, but we don't. What is Plant Plant A? Is just Plant A. Um, <laughs> but it is the older of the facilities, and we. We have some of those that date back to its original um, construction, 1900, then on. Um, and obviously, we've experienced some issues there. And we, we have had some settling at that building that is unsettling for us. Right. Um, so we are concerned about that. And we we wanted to eventually um, close down that facility. But the cabin was built to expand um, in case we had growth in our area or should it need to become our primary treatment facility. Mm -hmm. And so what you see above the ground is just that little bitty building. And you don't think much. And it goes down several stories stories wow. and what's what's down there obviously the treatment um, some of the, the things that we need to treat the piping those sorts of things but there are also places where it could be expanded um, there was some extra piping put in there were some pads put in so that we could you know put equipment on those those sorts of things so what they're really doing is what was intended um, that's a 10 million gallon a day um, facility and it's being expanded to 30 so it can completely replace um, the plant a okay. um, and what's great about that is we you know our peak is around 19 million gallons a day so people are probably wondering why are you building it to 30 but you have to realize we need to be able to take down different trains or different portions of that okay. so let's say just imagine um, three sections of, that produce 10 okay so we may need to close one of those down for just routine maintenance and so we have those other two I up and see. running okay. or if we did have you know you know a really really dry summer and we need you know need a lot more water out right. there we can certainly go beyond that so the flexibility of that plant is going to be absolutely amazing well that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. 19 million gallons a day mm-hmm mm -hmm. Sonia, that's, that's a lot our, of water. That's our peak. Um, generally, it's 13 to 14, which is still a that's lot. That's a lot of water. It is a lot of water, isn't it? I did not know that. Yeah, it's amazing to me. Um, you know, keep in mind that we are providing to the county, and there right. there's some irrigation going on there. Um, you know, just think about it. There are pools. There right. are... Um, showers every day washing our laundry washing our car watering our right. yards car washes um you know restaurants hospitals everybody's using water mm -hmm. um and so yeah it, wow. it is surprising isn't it yeah it mm -hmm. certainly is well listen mm -hmm. speaking of a lot of water uh how much water does omu store and, and where is it well we have it's kind of interesting um we do have the water towers mm -hmm. that you see all over and there are different different types of those and we have about five million gallons that are in storage what's interesting is that we have an underground storage facility at the cabin i mean at the at plan a which you can't even see and when we go in to maintain that it's just a little tidbit divers go in to check that out we wouldn't want that job would we no 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 no, no. no. Um, and then and then we have a large one the, the others are located throughout the city you've seen hillcrest and parish right. avenue and and um, and Frederica and that kind. Of. And then we also have one located adjacent to the cabin plant. Now we'll be adding another storage facility as part of the expansion at the same location. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about smart water usage for the summer. What are some tips you can offer? You know, I just talked about the fact that we have ample supply, that we have good water right. and that it's affordable. <laughs> but you know, we still all want to manage, manage our usage because um, for most people, you're also paying a sewer charge on that, which right. is charged by RWRA, but billed, billed by OMU. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just want to think about that and and first and foremost I think um, just thinking about what you're doing and when you're doing it um, a lot of people like to wash their cars I don't blame you a bit mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing that in the heat of the day it's probably not a good idea it's evaporating you're having to add more water same thing with watering your yard or your lawn um, I know that it's a uh, we all want pretty lawns mm -hmm. and those sorts of things but you know I see sprinklers running when it's raining 
Yeah. You know, um, I see a lot of people out there in the heat of the day watering their lawns and their flowers, and I know that that's mm -hmm. evaporating off off of those yeah. plants. A lot of people have very very specific feelings about watering in the morning or watering in the evening. That's up to you. But certainly water not during the heat of the day. You know, right. and maybe think about some plants that don't require as much water. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot that are a little more heat resistant and and can take it a little bit more. But thinking about when you're doing those things, I think makes a big difference. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think I think we as humans we take water for granted. You know, I, I think we do, and it, it's a very, do. very precious resource. I think we do, too. You know, every time I turn that sink on or every time I turn my hose on, I expect mm -hmm. it to be there, and I, and I don't think a thing about how much I'm using right. um, because I know there's more. Right, yeah. Um, but, you know, certainly just thinking about when you're using it and how you're using it. You know, controlling leaks, you know, uh, leaky hoses are, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I've never had a hose that didn't leak at the faucet. Right. Um, but, you know, maybe adding some washers, doing some things like that, that adds up, you know. Um, I think what's really interesting, a lot of people are using rain barrels. Yes. Um, to water their gardens, and that's fantastic. Um, I encourage that, not because there's not ample water, right. but because, you know, that is another source, and you have it there, and it, it's rainwater. Right. Why not use it? So kind of thinking that through, and, and um, you know, every, a lot of people run their washers on the highest setting or they don't do a full load. Mm -hmm. Thinking about that, because you know that's also using electricity, so you wanna think about that. Same thing with their dishwasher. Make sure that it's good and full. Um, I hope everyone has an aerator on their faucets so that it's kind of aerating that water and you're not needing as much of it. Same thing with your, your showers and your tubs. Yeah. Well, Sonia, mm -hmm. what do people do when it comes to filling uh, fill pools? Um, you can have a separate meter for that so that there okay. there's not necessarily, um, but um, yeah, you, you pay for that water. Right, but I mean, but, but maybe mm -hmm. what you can do is get it to where you don't pay for the sewer charge. You, you would need to look at the metering system on that and okay. how you would want to do that. But okay. certainly you can do that, and it may be worth a meter. Same thing, we have irrigation meters that a lot of people use. Um, I say irrigation, that's really kind of sprinkle meters in the right. city. So if you wanted to do that and not pay the sewer charge, there is a charge up front to get that meter put in and those mm -hmm. sorts of things, but it could save you money in the long run. But we can run those numbers for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, let's, let's mention the Community Cares Program. Mm -hmm. uh, this is... Mm -hmm. uh, this is how our viewers can help people within our community who may struggle mm -hmm. paying their utility bills. Well, what's wonderful about that is that um, customers are able to put their money with OMU's money, um, which is their money as well, because we are your public utility. But we make, we make a contribution to the Salvation Army um, periodically throughout the year around $50,000 a year, mm -hmm. and that money is used to help those that are assisting, that need assistance with paying their bill. Okay. Um, and what's wonderful about that is that the Salvation Army has a, a wonderful way of uh, vetting people to make sure that it is going to those that need and that the, that, that money is going directly to um, to OMU customers. So the OMU money is going to OMU right. customers. But you know, we, we think about this kind of stuff around Christmas because mm -hmm. it's cold and we know, you know, people are struggling and you know, we people are, are trying to have a Christmas for their family and sure. that sort of thing. And that's wonderful. But you know, we're coming upon summer mm -hmm. and summer are some of our highest bills um, electric wise. Yes. And what is what is really difficult about that is um, we forget about that, you know, mm -hmm. we think about it. So, you know, people, um, you know, as soon as June hits, it seems like it starts getting warm again and people are having to um, run their air conditioners or they're running, win running window units. A lot of um, people are in homes that aren't buttoned up. And when we say buttoned up, right. they're not, they're not fully insulated. They're not full, you know, they're losing a lot of that air. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what they're going through. You know, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people who struggle to pay their bill are you would you know you would think people would have higher bills that live in newer homes right. or, or homes that are more but um, they don't a lot of people who are struggling are those that are paying some of the highest bills because they're living they're living in homes or renting apartments yes. that aren't fully insulated right. um, and aren't as efficient as the ones that we're accustomed to right so certainly all you have to do, you get your bill every month, you can add some money in there, you can write a check, you can even give to someone specifically if you'd like to come in the office. Um, you know, a little change adds up here and there, you know, one-time gifts, those sorts of things. All of that money is used strictly to help customers. None of that money is paid administratively. So I want to make that very clear. There is no charge. The Salvation Army does not charge us to do that. Okay. So what's wonderful about that is, you know, every single dollar, every single penny is going to those that need. And what a unique way to help people, you know, I I think we think about food mm -hmm. and I think we think about clothing, but you know, there are those necessities, those bills right. that are coming every month. And one of those is unfortunately your utility. That's bill. right. And we, and we know how hot it can get in Owensboro during the summer. You know, I mean, it can get very, very warm. And like you said, mm -hmm. a lot of folks mm -hmm. who rent and things of that nature, they're not in control of the insulation of that house. They, and so sometimes they're sub subjected to these mm -hmm. higher bills 
because of that. And that's not something right. they can control. Right. Or they're in a situation where they can't afford to make upgrades. And right. so we certainly understand that. Um, but, and we want to help. And, right. and that's one of the reasons, you know, even though we have ample power supply, we have ample water supply, um, we still want to talk to you about reducing your bill. And we, you know, as homeowners and, and, and others are able to make more changes right. to our homes than they are. So let's just kind of think about that. I think, I think the summer is a great time. You know, we have a lot of humidity in this area. Yes. So we have a lot of people that need to run their air conditioning continually. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. listen, Sonny, where can people get uh, more information? Oh, always mm -hmm. visit us at omu.org. And if you don't see it there, let us know. But also call us at 270-926-3200. You can learn about the Community Cares Program. Our staff can talk to you about automatic payments with that, anything like that. Follow us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, sign up for our texting option. Follow us on Twitter. Those are great ways to find out things that are happening immediately, not just outages, but anything else that may be affecting you, street closings, anything like that. It's an easy way to have that information at your fingertips. Excellent. Sonia, thanks thank for you. joining this mm -hmm. month. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And thank you for tuning in. And on behalf of everyone at OMU and OCTC, we wish you a wonderful summer and we'll see you right back here in May.